Welcome to the latest instalment of the ball cam and if you're wondering why I'm sat in a log cabin well you wouldn't be far wrong because I'm actually sat in the uh, the magnificent lodge swim at Lac des Lesmont uh, in France. Now this is uh, a lake in the Champagne region that uh, myself and friends have visited several times in the past and on this particular trip I'm joined by Matt, John and Mick. So there's only four of us on a lake exclusive and I've decided to do this video slightly differently. Now I'm actually talking to you now, it's Thursday afternoon, so I'm pretty much starting the video uh, at the end of the week. And what I will say is I'm, I'm not going to follow a, a rigid timeline or anything, but what I am going to do is just cover some of the highlights and some of the best bits um, of our holiday week to France. So yeah, thanks for joining. Uh, do stick around and I would say probably in the next 30 or 40 minutes, I hope you find a bit of entertainment and a bit of amusement um, from how our week went. So uh, for now, it's ball come out and I'll catch you in a moment. Beautiful weather this morning. So, fans parked here. And I've taken the gentleman's option. If you get an option of a, a swim with the lodge. So, yeah, pulled my finger out this morning, got a couple of rods in for now, just to get it going. And uh, yeah, welcome to what's gonna be my home the next week. Fantastic. Ball come out. Okay, good morning. And it's glorious. Right, uh, this is the right hand side of the lodge swim at Lesmont. Now I've already got a couple of rods out. Uh, the rod on the right hand side, uh, bait boated over to the far margin to a known spot uh, in three and a half meters. I've not gone crazy, I've not gone too far in, but I just want to ease myself in and hopefully if I get a bite, I'll land it. So. Uh, second rod's just out in open water. Uh, it's a deep old pond, this, um, on a spot near, near some uh, pronounced humps in around about seven metres depth. So uh, it's enough to get us up and running for the start of this Lesmont session. And it's, uh, it's great to have rods out. Let's see what happens. Catch you later, ball come out. Right then, I'm just sort of sheltering out the sun. It's already getting uh, pretty warm. Right, let's have a look at the terminal tackle setup that I'm gonna start off with. So. Now I've got about probably about 50 centimetres of uh, tungsten rig tubing uh, to a Signet leg clip and then I'm going with 6 ounce clinger lead and then one of the large anti-tangle sleeves uh, which I really really like and then I've probably got about 25 centimetres of a prototype fluorocarbon hook link and then if we look at the actual hook section itself so yeah, what I've got there is, uh, I don't know if you can see that particularly well, I'll, I'll do another shot in a minute when I come in closer. So I've got um, a D-rigged Signet curve in a size four and the hook bait I've gone for uh, is a yellow uh, barrel shaped wafter. Now, literally that will just sit off the hook and then with the, uh, with the feed I'm putting in, there's definitely some, be some yellow in the mix. So, um, that's the starting length. I may shorten up depending how I get on, but certainly the spot I'm fishing, um, it's hard. It's relatively shallow for this lake, three and a half meters. So I'm gonna go in fairly stealthy um, and hopefully that should sort them out. So obviously, yeah, fishing the, the shallow spots, especially when the sun's up, uh, the water's very, very clear. So I'm gonna go with stealth and hopefully uh, that'll get me a bite. So let's see, ball come out. Catch you in a sec. Walked into Mr. Bridges' swim. Just put the rod out. It's off. Oh no. Yeah. It's come off. Yeah. You sure? Yeah, I think so. Look at his feet back. Oh dear. I was about to say, and he's into one already, but it looks like it's fallen off, unfortunately. Done again, bud. Bad luck, old bean. It depends. It does. Mouth. Breakfast here. I'll see they. <laughs> It 
we go on. You know, after taking me through just about every uh, wee bed in front of me and locking me up, we've got a nice mirror in the net. Happy days. All right, let's get him out and have a look. Simply lovely. What have we got, JB? It is a carp. Excellent. And it led me a merry old song and dance. Oh, yes, it did. So, yeah, off the boot after redoing the rod this morning, after being spectacularly done at about 25 past five, back out with the battleship, dropped it back in, and it's just before 10 o'clock it's gone. And uh, yeah, he's sort of wondering there she is. has bite time gone? But no, it's a nice one, mate, isn't it? Dear lovely fish. Excellent. Formidable. Check you out. Call me Gazard. Oh, we've got John Boy on the camera. What are we saying, mate? Stunner. She's lovely. Yes, we like you. She is indeed, and a very welcome sight as well, because it's not been the easiest start to no, the week, has been, it? It's been a bit slow. I think we've drank more beer than we've had bites by a country <laughs> mile. That's what happens when you're on holiday. It is indeed. Bought something old fashioned with me, John. What's that? Bought the stills camera. Hmm. Do they even exist these days? <laughs> right, the nice thing at Lesmont is you've got these little way stations in each of the swims, I believe. So, it just makes the whole process of uh, weighing your fish that much easier. What am I saying? I think they're running a bit lean this week, George. 29.6, I would say. Well, it's bigger than the first one, which was 28 pounds. So we're working up the right way. There we go. If that's how a 29 pounder fights. <laughs> Mega. Indeed, let's get that stills camera working. It looks a bigger fish than that. You pick it up and it weighs. Yep. Bizarro. Really what film you got in this? Uh, I don't know, some old fashioned, some old fashioned stuff. Well, that's a lovely one. What do we give him, John? 29? 29.6. 29.6. Beautiful fish. Nice carbs. Lovely fish. Right then. Breakfast time. Yep. And talk us through it. Why are you opening that then, George? Well, you untwist the wire. <laughs> Take no, the wire off first. Not so how. Untwist the wire. Why? Why? Oh. PB day. Really? PB common. Or PB carp. Um, 62.8. 
which beat my previous personal best buy, eight ounces. So happy days. Get it open, boy. There you go, Matt. What's that? That is a sixty-two pound, eight ounce common with a new PB. What an incredible, incredible carp! Huge fish, really, really. Truly really enormous. Go on, then, mate. He's gone. Well Ooh. done, George. <laughs> the bronze common, I think. Hey, boom! <laughs> Cheers, boys. You did properly. Good skills. <laughs> Cheers, boys! Hey! Good <laughs> morning. Okay, it's about half past midnight now, and the uh, the margin rod's gone. Bit of an unexpected uh, wake up call, if I'm honest. And uh, this one's a little bit bigger. Um, amazingly, it did very little on the fight. I literally just wound it in. And now, since I've got it on the bank, it's gone crackers. But they sold him up. Or at least trying to hold him up. There we go. Oh, he's got some length on him. <laughs> That's what they all say. There we go. 35.15. Yeah, that'll do for a midnight wake up call. Awesome. Yeah, you can see the fish, you don't need to see me. 35.15. Lovely. Morning. Okay. I redid the rod in the night after um, at 35 common and we're just after 8 o'clock in the morning and it's gone again. Yeah, nice mirror by the look of it. Alright, let's get her out and have a look. Catch you in a sec. Forty-four four. Lovely. Okay, the good news is, in uh, less than twenty-four hours, we've gone from the twenties into the thirties, and now into the forties. There we go. Forty-four four. after 5.30 a.m. and the left hand rod's gone and that's uh, a deep water spot they've been baiting since uh, since Sunday so it's taken a little while but we've got a bite off it eventually yeah looks a nice fish as well long and leathery happy days happy happy days Okay, the moment of truth. 46. I 
4614. You don't catch many long ones. Not mirrors. So. Yeah. I thought it was really big when I saw it in the water, and it's just, it ain't <laughs> got the depth or the. I started got a belly, mate, that big. <laughs> yeah. Bosh. What's happening, mate? Proves I'm a good friend who's got one. I'd like to look and see one, actually, because I haven't seen one this week yet. <laughs> Fingers crossed we can sort that out. I think so. Morning. About 10 o'clock now, and the old uh, margin rod has burst into life after um, very quiet overnight, and to the point where I thought something's not quite right, so I thought I'll, I'll crank it in probably about an hour ago. And as it was, the hook bait was fine, so we just put it back out, and it's gone. Off she's rattled. Happy Off days. she's gone. So yeah, happy days. Bank holiday Thursday harvest day, eh, John. Could be. Cheers, Queenie. Yeah. Cool, cool. Right, right. Tell us something. <laughs> yeah, I think it's get on the snag rod. Yeah, it's normally if you get a single bleep, something happens, doesn't it? Yep. Beep. As the line starts to pick up. What we don't want. That's How's it feeling, Jerry? He's hurt in my arm. Good. Put in anywhere, mate. Uh, we'll just see where he ends up, mate, because I can half predict it's going to end up kiting and going next door. So right. um, I was more worried about it going that way, if I'm honest. But he is behaving for now. I think he might have my way messing around us. <laughs> Come on, mate. 
and cook her. Over the net she goes. And in there. Well done, mate. Bosh! Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, what have we got, JB? It's a nice one, then. That is a lovely one. Isn't it? It is a lovely one, you're right. Very scaly. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, nice fish. Ah. What we're saying, JB? What we're saying is. We have another fish. A nice mirror And it's a very, very, very pretty mirror carp. Incredibly pretty. Let's see what she weighs. There's a 40. What are you calling it, John? 42-1 on, no, 42-2. 2 Excellent. What's that, George? That's all my capabilities are with one of these, just turn it to a green square. That's beautiful fish, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's awesome. Call it 42 2. 42 2. Proper gap. Yeah, that's best. Bar of June gold, John. I'd say that's called an early harvest. Yeah, <laughs> definitely an early harvest. Yeah, that is a mega carp. Beautiful. Right, breakfast time. Makes a change, bud. Makes a change. Get in the dolly hole. Jeez. Okay, uh, time to redo a rod. Let's uh, have a little look at the configuration. So, uh, double Dennis hoppers loaded with goodies, hook bait. Jobs are good, and right, let's get her out there. You're on camera, you want, you want to hold it yourself. There you well, go. it'll be the first time this way. Okay. <laughs> You're going to put it out for me? If you want. Right then. Come in on here, George. Uh, the beauty of this lovely modern machinery, which I'm just not used to using at all. Um, right, let's go to the spot. So, with the joys of GPS, let's go to spot two. Okay, we're right near the spot now. So I'm literally using the GPS to get me uh, close enough. And I'm just tweaking my way in. Now, what we should see in a second should start to come up. Here we go, going up the shelf, right. Oops. It's just older there. Been dropping in about three meters. Let's just back her up a little bit. That's it, we're on the shelf now. 
just under three metres. Bombs away. Lovely. Right, let's get it back home. Afternoon. It's about six o'clock now, and uh, the main heat of the day is uh, has passed, and I'm I'm just about back in the shade in the lodge now. So as has become customary, uh, getting to about twelve o'clock, uh, wind in, rest the swim for a few hours, go for a wander, go at the shop, have a shower, have something to eat, have a bit of a tidy up, and then consider uh, prepping again for the evening. So, but obviously as is uh, as is the done thing, if you're winding in got to get on the Cronenberg so yeah a few of these uh, out of the sun on an afternoon has been absolutely perfect so yeah it's prep time now so uh, it's time to get some rods out again for the evening and that's pretty much what I've been doing all week you kind of get into uh, a cycle of what you're doing and how you're doing it and if it's uh, if it's working then it's happy days all right ball come out let's get some rods out Number seven, ah, 33.15, uh, taken on the left hand rod in the deep water. So yeah, that spot's starting to uh, do a couple of bites now, which is good, so awesome. Well happy. Morning, morning. Just after half past five and the, uh, the margin rod's gone. Again, with this, 47, four common. Check that out. That is awesome. That is a proper, proper carp. And uh, after a disturbed night's sleep, uh, a duet of commons, and the cat's going at it in the background. What a lovely way to start. Uh, our final day on the lake. Mega, absolutely mega. Morning. Uh, just dealt with second fish of the morning um, off the margin rod again. And uh, I've got the fish in the net still and it looks like it could push for my biggest fish of the trip. It's definitely close, uh, it's a mirror this time. Let's go and have a quick look. And then we'll get the weigh-in and the photos done. So yeah, Friday morning's going, uh, yeah, certainly better than uh, than planned, which is good. So yeah, I'm knackered, but um, yeah, all is well in the lodge. All come out. Morning. The margin rod's gone again. And that looks like a nice mirror. That's chunky. Excellent, let's get her out and have a look. Okay. I think this is close to being the biggest fish of the trip. Let's wait for that needle to settle. 47. 47. 13. Awesome. We have the uh, watering can, mister. Well, 
There we go. Forty-seven thirteen. How's that looking, pal? Crack on. <laughs> Crack on. <laughs> Crack it. I'm in. Good afternoon. And it's uh, Bank Holiday Friday afternoon as it happens, so in what's going to be our, our last on the uh, the pond uh, for this particular Les Mont session. So yeah, obviously we've got this afternoon, uh, this evening and then early tomorrow morning before we have to pack up. So um, Friday thus far has been really, really good. Um, I had those three fish uh, overnight through to this morning, uh, including two 47s, one mirror, one common. And then would you believe it, John who moved into Peg 8 uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, he's also had a 47 common and a 46 common in short succession this morning so certainly that move paid off for him uh, so yeah uh, what else is there to report bit of a weather change bit of drizzle the winds picked up and it just the humidity feels like it's uh, it's building uh, storms are forecast so we'll have, we'll have to see if that brings the fish on the feed for the final night anyway rods are out and uh, I'm gonna get my head down for an hour because I had quite a disturbed night last night so yeah we'll see what happens and if there's anything good I'll report back and uh, for now it's ball come out catch you in a bit morning Saturday morning quarter past six and as you can see behind me we've got a weather change finally I'm sure it's gonna rain at some point this morning and it feels like the pressure has really dropped so yeah, with no activity on either of the three rods overnight, which I must admit did surprise me. I've cranked in uh, the right-hand rod, which is fished over to the uh, to the far margin. I've just dropped it a bit further down the shelf. So rather than being in three metres, uh, I've dropped down into four. So sort of really at the bottom of the shelf. Um, I'll give it the last couple of hours before I have to wind in. And we pack up. And then we've got to be off site. So yeah, it's the last dance. So let's give it a go. See what happens. Catch you in a bit. Ball cam out. Okay, quick look at the snag fishing setup I've been using this week. Now I've gone for single sticks, it just, uh, it's far more practical just to really lock the rod in. Now, I've got my 12 foot, three pound Tracker Trinity rods. Obviously I've been bait boating this week, so I've not needed to cast. And I've gone for a heavy fluorocarbon in 20 pound, which is very, very low stretch. And then um, you'll notice I've got a Tracker multi-purpose hook just wrapped around a Signet CV bank stick, clipped onto my reel. Now that really is a fail safe, so in the event of a, uh, a surge intake, that rod is going nowhere. And then the rod itself, it's locked in with a large butt gripper rest, which is pinched on the cork. Then if I move up the rod, uh, I've got a Signet isoclip uh, with a line just trapped in there. Now what that allows, in the event of a take, even on a tight line, it just, uh, the obviously the line will pull out the clip and then it gives me more indication up at the business end where I've got a heavy signet bobbin on a low drop uh, with the butt ring behind the alarm again just as another fail safe and then I've got the alarm not super sensitivity but certainly enough and then uh, signet snag ears on another CV bank stick so uh, yeah it's worked a treat this week get good bite indication and uh, you're not worrying that you're gonna get a rod dragged in which is obviously the nightmare that you can face if you're fishing to snags or to features. So yeah, that's it. Ball came out. Right then. It's nine o'clock now, showered, packed down. The van is loaded and I'm donned in civilian clothing once again so I can return to the world as a human being, uh, not a carp angler. So yeah, that's, um, that's kind of our week. It's been a bizarre last 24 hours. My last fish was at 7 a.m. Friday morning and absolutely nothing. No occurrences, no bleeps. Uh, it's just like the lake's gone dead. And I must admit, it's a strange phenomenon, but I've known it happen here before, where literally Lesmont just shuts its doors and it says that's enough. And then it welcomes the next group of anglers on uh, for their week's fishing. So yeah, anyway, if you've uh, stayed tuned this long, 
thank you very much. I hope it's been of some amusement and uh, enjoyment, and a few, you know, a few ideas for uh, if you're travelling and going to be fishing France yourself. So yeah, take care, stay safe, and for now, it's all come out. Be seeing you.